we have the seven speed dual clutch PDK transmission out of a 2011 Porsche Panamera. Now, what happens is this came to us from a used car lot and the a vehicle seemed to operate very nicely, but then would go into limp in. And uh, unfortunately, when the transmission controller goes into limp in with this dual clutch transmission, the vehicle can't move. We would have to use the scan tool to clear the fault and then we could road test, continue our road test. Now, the actual fault that was causing the situation where we had the uh, limp in was the uh, P1731. And what it's saying there is displacement sensor shift rod gears four and six implausible signal, invalid signal. Now what we have done, and we'll show this in just a moment, is we have purchased the whole displacement sensor assembly, which what it's doing is looking at the shift forks there for the uh, first and third, second and reverse, fourth and sixth, and of course, fifth and seventh. And uh, we'll talk more about the displacement sensor when we actually look at it, but what I've done is I've removed the pan. Now let's take a look at our pan. Now it looks like somebody's worked on this fairly recently. We've purchased a new pan and filter. This is the one that has come off the transmission. The fluid is very clean. So it looks like this has been replaced in fairly recent history. The uh, fluid is actually Pentacin FFL3, which is costing us almost $20 a quart. And uh, it takes nine quarts. So we have that uh, nine quarts of fresh fluid to put in it. So what I'm getting ready to do is I have two electrical connectors. One is for the actual uh, shift solenoids. The other electrical connector, this is for the displacement sensor and the three pressure switches which is the pressure switches for the input clutches. I have two input clutches and the pressure switch for the all wheel drive clutch. Now this is kind of interesting when we look at this transfer case, I don't have any gears here. What happens is I can actually lock the shaft going to the front differential to the rear differential with this clutch. So I have an infinite range. I either have pure two-wheel drive or a solid lock four-wheel drive and everything in between. Very clever. So this is a great big multiple disc clutch back here. All right, so uh, I need to remove the valve body. Now we work on a lot on ZF transmissions. And of course this is a ZF transmission. And uh, what happens is the 40 Torx fasteners, which are much larger, these are the ones that I need to remove to remove the valve body and solenoid assembly. So let me go ahead and continue with that. I do have a parking pole and a manual linkage, but this doesn't control any type of manual valve. This is strictly for a parking pole. Now, of course, we were guessing that this uh, pan filter assembly had been replaced recently, and I can see a manufacturing date of the 25th of June, 2019. Now, again, this car came from a used car lot, which had just recently purchased us at auction with, of course, a reported transmission malfunction. And of course, obviously, that's why it's at our shop. Okay, now I'm prepared to remove the valve body. And of course, the first thing you want to do is remove all the 40 Torx fasteners. Stay away from the 30 Torx. Obviously, when you're using your 40 Torx, you can see I certainly am not going to take out that fastener. But here are all these fasteners you want to take out and then I'm going to lift the valve body from the case. Okay, here I've carefully lifted the valve body from the case. I'm gonna be real careful with it. The fluid's nice and clean. Obviously, it's been changed recently. So let me go ahead and put this to the side. Okay, we've removed the valve body, and now what we're getting ready to do is to go ahead and uh, remove the sensor harness. And what I mean by sensor harness, this is the shift fork position sensor. We'll have this out and talk about it here in just a moment. I have three pressure sensors. Uh, one is for one of the input clutches. The other four is the other input clutch. And this is an all wheel drive model. So I have this multiple disc clutch and this is a clutch pack that allows me to infinitely vary the amount of torque that I apply to the front differential. Like I said, there's no gear train back here. I can either lock the front axle 
or I should say the front drive shaft to the rear drive shaft for four wheel lock or just operating two wheel drive and anywhere in between. Now, of course, what I'm looking at right here is I see my um, uh, oil pump, which is offset here. This is a oil pump here for the uh, hydraulics of the transmission moves a large volume of oil because it's using it to actually move the shift forks and also apply the clutches and provide cooling. And of course, here I see my um, uh, hydraulic passage here going back to the rear clutch. So for actually, I think this is for lubrication actually. So uh, here we go. So I'm going to carefully remove, these are actually 27 torques. So go ahead and take the two speed sensors loose and be able to pull the two speed sensors up and uh, go ahead and remove this assembly. Okay, now this is the displacement sensor and uh, here we see the ZF logo. Now, what I was trying to do is carefully look at the Porsche after sales training literature and they talk about this as actually using a type of alternating current coil. And uh, what happens is that I have a series of, for lack of a better term, you can actually see it. I'm gonna call it a paddle right here on the shift fork. And this is moving back and forth across the displacement sensor. And since I actually have an alternating current flowing through this, it's actually inducing a voltage in this aluminum, and I'm calling it a paddle, because this is kind of what it looks like, a paddle. It induces a voltage and a corresponding current flows that opposes the current that created it. So what happens is if the paddle tries to move abruptly, it really changes the characteristics of the inductance of this coil and the alternating current there flowing through it is going to vary. And because um, as the uh, as this paddle moves, it's going to induce an eddy current that's going to oppose the movement. So it acts as both a displacement sensor and a damper. And here, of course, I have a steel tool, and there's no magnetic field there whatsoever, and I can see these are aluminum. Here's my magnet. You can see that, here, there's my magnet, definitely a magnet. You can see these are aluminum down here. There's no ferrous metal there. This is aluminum, and this is just a coil of wire. Now, how much does this cost? Well, what do you get? You get a displacement sensor, all of them. You get a temperature sensor. You get three connectors for pressure switches. If you have a two-wheel drive, you're not gonna have the third pressure switch. You get two speed sensors. I think I already said temperature sensor. And then of course, there's my through the case connector. The other through the case connector is for the solenoids. The two connectors on the case, and of course the manual linkage that's controlling the parking pole. That's the only external interface for the transmission. Of course, I do have cooling lines, but uh, there we go. And so um, we're going to go ahead and unbox our new unit and talk about it. All right, here we see our displacement sensor. We bought this from Porsche dealer in Atlanta. They give an excellent price. There's an extreme static electric bag there. I don't think we're super static electric sensitive, but I'm certainly not going to take any chances. Let's take a look. And here's the the new one. Here's the old one. Let's see here. Uh, certainly a lot of these part numbers are lining up, aren't they? I see a G and an L there at the end. Don't really see any type of date code. I'll be careful we don't get them mixed up, okay? But here's the old one. Now, why are we replacing this? Because of the corresponding fault code that we're receiving. And here is the brand new one. So obviously there's gonna be a very unhappy customer if I still have that fault code. Okay, here we've installed our new sensor assembly. Now, here I see the pressure sensors for the two input clutches. And apparently this is the passage, I believe, for one of the input clutches. 
And of course you can hear other cry. Here is for the other input clutch. And as we move over here, this apparently is a tube that allows us to gain access to the passage for the rear clutch. And you'll notice that we have our feedback pressure sensors here for the all-wheel drive clutch and one of the input clutches for one of the multiple disc clutch packs and one for the other. Now, the actual actuators that move the paddles back and forth, they have a clever locking mechanism so that, uh, like for instance, uh, fifth and seventh, first and third. So if I'm in first, there's no way that I can shift into fifth or seventh and vice versa. If I'm in second or reverse, there's no way I can shift into fourth and sixth. So kind of an interesting uh, little setup there. I have a nice illustration in the um, after sales training from Porsche, kind of hard to see right here. The passages, though, going to the hydraulic pistons that move the four shift forks back and forth have these squares, and it's a little hard for me to apply pressure without it shooting back. I did try that and kind of take a bath here just a moment ago. But I don't see any evidence of metal or debris or any damage. So based on that fault code that we talked about earlier, we're going for probably one of the single most expensive parts, and that would be the actual displacement sensor assembly itself. And of course, this is the fluid temperature sensor, which is going to mount right there on top of the valve body. Okay, now I'm ready to carefully lay the valve body on and hook up the solenoid harness. Okay, here we've carefully placed our 40 Torx bolts to retain the valve body to the case. It's a big difference between 40 Torx and 27 Torx that retain the valve body halves together. We don't want to disturb these. Uh, one of our fasteners is going to be retaining the temperature sensor. I'll go ahead and put him in position. And then of course, after I've got these connected, I'll go ahead and lay the harness down and make sure I hook up correctly the solenoids themselves. Okay, here we go. We have the valve body carefully installed and we have of our solenoids all plugged in. And you'll notice that there are five of, it looks like one type of part number. And I have two with the black connector and two with the white connector. Now remember what I'm controlling here. We're controlling the input clutch one, which I don't think necessarily calling it one. I'm not even sure that's the, the pressure sensor for one, but one of the input clutches. There's its feedback pressure sensor. The feedback pressure sensor for the other input clutch is down here. And uh, if I had a two-wheel drive model, I wouldn't have this pressure sensor or the clutch assembly in the back, but this is all-wheel drive. Uh, the fluid looks like it had been changed recently, and of course we are looking at the date code on the uh, old pan. We have a brand new pan and filter that we're going to be installing here in just a moment. And of course we have nine quarts of what it calls for Pentacin FFL3 fluid. And uh, the FFL4 I think supersedes the FFL3, but I've purchased FFL3. Okay, here we have our brand new pan. Now, of course I bought this online. And what do I mean by that? I buy everything online. Uh, with the price coming from a local dealership so high, it seems like it's always more practical to buy it online. And oftentimes when I do need it from a local dealership and I'm in a hurry, they don't even have it in stock. So they're buying it online. But here we have in ZF fashion, a ZF plastic pan with the integrated filter. And here I see my magnets to uh, catch any ferrous metal debris. Now I'm going to put just a little assembly lube on the O-ring for my filter that goes there in the suction for my pump and with the pan I've got a fresh set of bolts. Hopefully they all made it in the package and uh, we'll be raring to go. Now this is actually the fill plug and by the way this plug is made out of aluminum. 
Uh, this is actually the fill plug and the level check plug for our transmission. It's going to hold nine liters of fluid, and that's what we're going to put in it. Now, there's a procedure that we're going to go through to uh, uh, check the level there that will, of course, uh, follow carefully. But the one thing working with automatic transmissions, you want the level to be where it's supposed to be or a little higher. If the level starts falling and gets too low, then it can cause all kinds of problems, especially if it's running out of fluid. Now, to actually drain the fluid, if you wanted to drain the fluid, there we have a plug to do that. This is a little different than what I had on the old pan, and it's the same size as the fill plug, at least on this pan, that's 8 millimeter. Now, this is an extremely heavy transmission. And you're probably wondering, how do you handle this? Well, I use these plastic carts, and I get these plastic carts from two locations, Northern and uh, Harbor Freight. When you buy one for engine or transmission work, always get the m most heavy-duty carts you possibly can. And uh, when I'm actually lifting the transmission, two men could can lift this, but I'm only one man here. I actually have this crane that I purchased here from Harbor Freight. And uh, it uh, attaches nicely to a steel beam here in the building. So this makes it very nice to be able to pick up and move the transmission. Okay, here's our unit, 2011 Porsche Panamera 4S. It has the normally aspirated 4.8 liter V8 all wheel drive. As we were mentioning, there's no gear train connecting the output shaft to the shaft going to the front differential. It's totally through a set of multiple disc clutches. So it gives me just pure two-wheel drive or lock four-wheel drive. Okay, here this is just simply a parking pole. There's no manual valve there. You can see I just simply have two positions. There's park, and then of course obviously there's unlock. So I can go ahead and shift through my ranges. Now one thing that is interesting, this is the uh, spline shaft. It slips into the um, uh, helical gear going up against the gear on the clutch housing, I should say, not directly to the output shaft, it's through the clutch. The shaft comes forward to the front differential. Now it's splined up here on the front differential, but unfortunately those splines were exposed to the elements and had rusted itself on there. So we had to go through a tremendous amount of work to push the transmission back far enough to retract the shaft from the transmission. And that was very difficult and then had to work quite hard to get it off the front differential. But uh, finally came Mustn't forget the O-rings here for the cooling lines. One of the things I am going to be doing is I'm going to be replacing the Torx fasteners with conventional hex metric bolts. And the reason why is because the confinement there is extremely tight. So we want to uh, make it so I, I can get in with just simply a wrench to get out to, at those brackets and to the flange that retains the cooling lines. Okay, obviously there's no torque converter. There's two clutch packs. They're wet type, multiple disc clutches. The actual cut clutch pack assembly is welded together, but it's behind this cover. As you can see, I have a big snap ring and a, um, a sheet metal cover. It has an O-ring. Takes a little bit to pop that off, but um, uh, we're not going to be going into that. We don't seem to have a problem there. And uh, transmission was quiet, seemed to perform pretty well. It's just that you didn't go far before you set that corresponding fault code for the 4-6 shift fork. In fact, actually, you could drive it. Just don't let it go into fourth or sixth gear. Keep it slow. If you go into reverse, you can go first, second, third. No more. And, of course, you know, with the shifting automatically, you got to watch it. Otherwise, it will slip up into fourth and set the code and put you in the limp in and then you got to clear it again with a scan tool before you can go anywhere. All right. There's has the 
signature of ZF with its integrated filter and plastic pan. As you can see, this case is actually an aluminum case, and of course, expecting it to be made in Germany. And uh, here we go. So she's all ready to go. And you can see my little crane holding it. I have a hydraulic table to move it over to the um, uh, uh, mode with which we'll transport it back to the shop and then onto the jack stand and back into the vehicle. Okay, this is how one man handles a transmission that weighs 300 pounds. So this is the 1,000 pound hydraulic table from Harbor Freight. And uh, of course what I have is some pieces of cardboard and we're going to slide it right back into the back of the Suburban. So only one man can do it and I just simply give it a push and slide it in. 